What would you do if God healed you? Would you tell everyone or keep it a secret? Let's talk about that. Hi, I'm Josh. Welcome to Honestly Radio. God healed me. I'm still blown away by the miracle he performed in my life. There is nothing I did or could do to deserve it or earn it. It was simply and amazingly an expression of the overwhelming goodness of Jesus Christ. It was both unexpected and awesome. This is my story. I have suffered with alpha-gal syndrome for nearly three years. It is a life-threatening allergy to eating all things from mammals and their byproducts. Think beef, pork, dairy products, gelatin found in everything from pill capsules to marshmallows. If I did consume any of those things, it would cause my throat to swell up, I would choke, and feel like I had the flu for at least three days. Alpha-Gal can make it really difficult to dodge all those things and stick to a diet of just birds and fish. But I had accepted that this is what the rest of my life would look like until Jesus Christ intervened in a miraculous way. I was attending church online, connecting with people who were logging in and praying for their request for God to move in their lives. While I was sitting on the couch, intensely praying for others' needs, I felt God speak to my heart. It was this strong, overwhelming presence and thought. I felt like the Lord was telling me this, ask me to heal you and believe that I will do it. I should also tell you that I had accidentally eaten food with traces of pork in it and was in the middle of a fairly bad allergic reaction. So while I wasn't expecting this specific interaction from Jesus, <laughs> I was on board. So I prayed as intensely as I knew how. And somewhere in the process, I fell into this deep, deep sleep. My wife woke me up. Hey, you, you fell asleep during church. And I noticed my symptoms had lessened already, which doesn't happen. And I was filled with this spiritual confidence that God had healed me. There was no big public or dramatic moment. It was a quiet and powerful move of the Holy Spirit. And it happened on a Wednesday night in my home. I had a physical exam with my doctor coming up that I had scheduled well in advance of this divine encounter. And so that Friday, while going over the usual things, I asked, hey, while I'm here, can we do a blood test check to see about my alpha-gal levels? The doctor said sure, and even though he was a little confused why I suddenly wanted to do that, I told him, I just want to see what's changed. It was late that Saturday night when everyone else was asleep that I got a notification on my phone that my blood results had come in. I excitedly opened the report and grinned from ear to ear as I read zero after zero after zero. There was absolutely no trace of alpha-gal in my system whatsoever. God erased my disease. Jesus healed me. I let out a shout and then quickly covered my mouth so I wouldn't wake everyone up. I immediately thanked God for doing such a miraculous work in someone so undeserving as myself. I praised God for his tremendous goodness and fought the urge to wake my wife up. Sunday morning, I showed her the results. We hugged and laughed and thanked God together. I texted my parents the good news and then told all my friends at church. And after service, for the first time in three years, I ate a cheeseburger. Hallelujah! It was amazing. No allergic reaction. That afternoon, I thought, I should tell everyone that I know. And that's when the enemy began to attack, and the doubts crept in. If the enemy can't kill us or destroy us, he will most definitely try to steal things away from us. And far too often, Satan is able to drive a wedge of doubt 
and steal our God-given testimony. My doubts kind of sounded like this. People will think I'm just a nut. They'll think I'm just after attention. They'll find a million reasons to explain it away. And our enemy is so good at stealing that for a moment, I began to look at other possible explanations for my healing. I began to think maybe I shouldn't share this publicly. But there was two big thoughts that kept coming back to me. Number one, every good and perfect thing is a gift from God's hand. Paraphrase of James chapter 1, verse 17. No matter what tactic the enemy tried to use, it couldn't beat that scripture. I had to acknowledge that this good gift was from God alone or deny him completely. And number two, I asked myself, am I ashamed of God? Do I care what a few people might think or what Jesus thinks? And that immediately snapped me back into a godly and spiritual reality. I was not ashamed that Jesus Christ had saved me, redeemed me, and restored me. And I would not be ashamed that he so wonderfully healed me. I would tell everyone I could all of what the Lord had done for me. Quick thought. If we're not careful, we can allow a few people to live rent-free in our heads and control what we do and how we think. We can allow that to limit what an infinite God wants to do in us and through us. It's time to serve the eviction papers and clean house. Allow Jesus Christ to be king and ruler over our heart and mind. And so I posted online about what God had done. I testified at my father's church, and that little post would go on to reach around 4,000 people. For perspective, that's about the size of one of the high school football stadiums around here. Then, my pastor shared the testimony about what God did, and it was heard by thousands more. If we're not careful, we can allow a few people in our head to limit our ability to tell stadiums full of people what Jesus has done in our lives. Do not let the enemy steal your testimony. I want to share my mountaintops and valleys, my triumphs and trials, so that you can know this is not about what I can do or what I deserve. It's all about Jesus Christ and his unrivaled love and goodness. If God can move and direct in someone as flawed and messed up as myself, he can absolutely do the same for you. In reflection of the healing the Lord performed in my life, it made me think of the story in the Bible found in Luke chapter 17 of the 10 lepers who were healed by Jesus. They saw Jesus, responded to him, and shouted, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. And Christ did. With just a look and a few words, they were healed. This horrible disease was erased, and they were cleansed as they went to the temple to be declared clean and allowed back to society and their normal lives. They were so ready to celebrate their healing, they forgot to thank the one who had given them this good and perfect gift. All except one who shouted, praise God, as he fell to the feet of Jesus, thanking him over and over again for seeing him and hearing him. And Jesus asks, didn't I heal 10 men? Where are the other nine? And in reading that passage, it made me wonder. Maybe the reason we don't hear about God healing people anymore is because so many never share their story. Instead of turning to thank and praise the Lord, we rush back to our normal lives and allow Satan to steal our testimony. Could it be that God still heals just as many people as he ever has, but only 10% are willing to testify, praise, and thank Christ for the miraculous work he has done in their lives? It really makes you wonder. 
I want you to know the most miraculous thing Jesus has ever done in my life is offer me the free gift of his salvation. He rescued me from an eternity in hell, redeemed my life, and restored me. And I am forever thankful. I'm not ashamed to proclaim that Jesus Christ has saved my soul. I'm also not afraid or ashamed to testify that he healed me of alpha-gal syndrome. And as grateful as I am for that tremendous gift, I want you to know the most miraculous thing we can experience is the presence of God. Through prayer, through the Bible, and through acts of service in building his kingdom and church, my encouragement to you today is to seek Jesus. You will find him. Listen for his voice. You will hear him. Respond to his commands. He will guide and direct you and be obedient to his word. It will light your path and purpose. And remember, every good and perfect thing is a gift from God. Don't be afraid or ashamed to share what he's done in your life. Thank you for joining us on the Honestly Radio podcast. Now is a great time to explore God's word yourself by reading Luke chapter 17 on your own. If you need a Bible, just tap on the link in the Honestly Radio Instagram or Facebook page. We have free resources for you, as well as ways to connect and download the podcast. I want to encourage you to seek God daily through prayer, the Bible, and through attendance and service at a local church. Allow Christ to begin building your faith. Thank you for joining us on Honestly Radio. Remember, live honestly, be blessed. We'll see you next time.